Hi, so I've got a slightly different video today and I'm going to do a review of this new uh, maths book that's come out a few weeks ago called The Maths of Life and Death by Kit Yates. Uh, now, first thing I should say, um, I'm not being paid to uh, to make this video, no one has um, has asked me to make this, but I do know the author Kit uh, personally, he's a lecturer at the university where I'm doing uh, my research, but he hasn't asked me to do this, he doesn't know that I'm making this video. I, I read it a few weeks ago and um, if I hadn't liked this book I would have just just not made the video. But luckily I really did enjoy the book and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and I'm really going to suggest that you uh, read this as well. Um, if you do want to get a copy you can get it from uh, my Amazon store uh, and I've got a link uh, below to, to get the book there. I do make a few uh, pence if you order it through that uh, through that link, full disclosure, but um, but that's the only way. In fact, everything in the Amazon store really contains just uh, things that I really endorse. I, I made the store not really for profit, but to uh, to uh, suggest things for my in-person students to buy and to collect them together in one place. So have a look at the other things there as well. Anyway, Kit's book is a re really, really fantastic book, a great addition to the uh, to the popular maths books that are out there. And in fact, actually, you know, I, I read the book thinking that I probably um, make a video like this from it. I didn't really expect um, to enjoy the book uh, too much myself because not you know not for any uh, reason to do with Kit. He's a great explainer of maths, a great lecturer, a real you know um, re really really uh, re really good at getting across uh, maths to a, to a wider audience. But I'm not really the target audience for this book. Right, I already know a lot of the maths uh, that's involved in in here. Um, you know, it really is a book that's aimed at a, a general public. And there is some maths in there, but it's not a it's not a it's not a maths book really. It's it's a book that tells you how uh, some really important maths, most of it fairly easy maths, but um, some of it a little bit complex. But it's you know really about how that relates to the to the world around you. So I think it's a brilliant book for GCSE students, uh, A level students thinking about applying to um, to university for for maths, but also for medicine, for law, for other applied sciences because that's what really what this book is about it's how maths applies to medicine how maths applies to law how maths applies not so much to everyday situations it's not the maths of you know of, of shopping and things like that it's 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 really a, tackling very serious issues um, and showing how maths applies to them but the thing that I was really surprised by when I read it was it does all of that it does all of the things that I would expect in a book like this but it's also so up to date it's got some brilliant examples uh, of recent uh, legal cases um, uh, of of really sort of modern uh, applications that and, and really really has developed um, the 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 popular math literature to have some new things. So I actually ended up really enjoying it as a book uh, to to read myself as well. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the book in more detail. So there's seven chapters in the book, uh, and uh, each chapter deals with maths applied to a different situation. Okay, so in chapter one, uh, we talk about exponential growth and decay. So, uh, you know, if you're doing A level or perhaps even in GCSE these days, you know, exponential growth is uh, the maths of uh, population growth of interest rate. You know, when you put money in the bank and it, you know you get interest on the money you start with, and then you get interest on the interest as well, and things grow very rapidly as populations grow. They grow. Uh, rapidly because once there are more people in the population there are then more new births and some brilliant examples in here you know he talks about uh, how you know the maths of exponential functions has been used to detect forgeries in in paintings uh, and even why it might uh, why time might feel like it uh, speeds up as you get older I don't know if you ever heard your parents say oh, every year feels like it's you know uh, shorter than the last talks a bit about that in the context of exponential functions you know it gives a great example of his his, his four-year-old son who you know he, you know when he thinks about christmas the next year he's um, you know it's it's a quarter of his life away but uh, but once you get into your 30s or 40s you know it's only a few percent of of your life so perhaps that affects how we feel about it but he talks about this in a lot in a lot more detail in the book um, the second chapter is all about a medicine contains really, you know, one of the fundamental, uh, fundamentally important bits of math that you can do at A level. Something that I've always, you know, spent a lot of time teaching to, uh, to classes that I've taught A level probability and statistics, which is the the rare disease testing, which effectively says that when you have a uh, a disease that's not very prevalent in the population and you test loads and loads of people for it, 
actually you can end up getting so many false diagno false positive diagnoses um, you know that they can almost overshadow the, the the correct diagnosis if I test a million people and actually only 10 people have the disease but you know because my test isn't too accurate I might end up accidentally saying 100 people uh, don't have the disease um, then uh, so that don't have the disease do then actually all of the uh, you know all of these false positives can outweigh the uh, the negatives and actually it's a really important fundamental uh, bit of maths that anyone thinking about being a doctor or, or really anyone who's ever going for a test like this should really bear in mind and it's relevant beyond medicine as well anything where we do uh, a test or a screen for for, for something that is unusual, it satisfies this thing. So I really would really encourage you to, to read that in detail and to think carefully about that example. It's really, really important. Um, so actually up, up to this point, I was thinking, oh, this is a nice book. It contains you know a lot of the examples that you know I think really should be in this book. And then I got to chapter three and I started to think, oh, actually, you know, this really is uh, a book that I can find interesting as well when he starts talking about maths in the law. Um, now, uh, I also studied law in the past as well, so I suppose it's a particular particular interest to me. But, uh, you know, he, he, some brilliant examples in here, you know, he talks about, uh, you know, DNA uh, evidence in trials. So when uh, when forensic investigators go to a, uh, to a crime scene and they pick up DNA and they say this DNA matches this suspect, uh, there's maths involved, right? Because, um, you know, it, 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 we don't actually sample the whole of someone's DNA. We just say, "Ah, oh, this is a very good match uh, to uh, to a suspect," and then it brings into uh, you know the probability of of this matching a suspect. Uh, and actually, I wonder, you know, you have to think about how many people you know might give in your whole population might give a positive match for this DNA evidence. Um, I'm not going to talk too much detail about this because I want you to. I really want you to read the book. But the thing I loved about this chapter was that. Uh, it's so you know up to date as well, and some of the cases that you know have happened in the last uh, ten or twenty years were really examined uh, carefully here, and you know I I really enjoyed the explanation uh, and application to those cases. In particular, there's the there was the uh, very tragic case of um, Sally Clark, who had uh, two uh, babies who both um, both died at home and had cot deaths, and there was uh, and and she was convicted on really on the basis of mathematical evidence that was presented to the court that said it's so unlikely uh, that this would happen to both of your children that she must be guilty now um, and Kit really does a great job in this book of explaining why that was really really flawed evidence and why actually uh, you know she probably should not have been convicted uh, on 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 that on that evidence um, and the other case in there as well that's been in the news a lot in the last years was um, you know Amanda uh, the Amanda Knox case you know there was a, a young student um, uh, Meredith Kircher who was murdered and uh, there was questions about whether she was murdered by her friend or if it could have been someone else and again really brilliant um, you know insightful discussion of that case and you know how the evidence came about and how maths and probabilities uh, you know were, were involved in, in in those judgments and how they were uh, then then challenged and overturned so really interesting uh, chapter four as well contained just so many really uh, relevant up-to-date uh, things so uh, in particular so this one um, you know it's uh, the title of uh, remember the title of that chapter it was don't believe the truth debunking media statistics so um, one of the best discussions there is actually about uh, race and violence in the US so we hear lots of statistics about um, you know a gun crime in the US in particular uh, and it's often very it's often very politicized in terms of whether it's black people murdering white people or white me white people murdering black people or white murdering white or black murdering black and you know and actually there's lots of statistics that come out about this and you know Kit really explains well here you know how easy it is to manipulate these statistics because you have uh, and this is always the case when you have different sizes of, of, of the different groups, right? If there is a one larger group and one smaller group and you start talking about percentages, you have to be very, very careful about how you talk about them. And again, it really explains the, uh, you know, it really debunks a lot of the myths around the statistics of, you know, how often uh, police officers murder uh, or, or, ki or kill in the course of duty, um, you know, white people versus black people and how we should correctly interpret those statistics in fact at this point where i really you know thought that uh, this you know this book is one that is in a really great tradition of um, popular maths books and reminds me a lot of this other book i've got here called um, how to lie with statistics by by daryl huff 
and I think it even mentions this book uh, in here as well. And, you know, this really was a, a book I read as a teenager, just cont and it's still super relevant today. I'd really recommend this one as well. Um, loads of just really basic um, uh, questions here of how, you know, how easy it is really to, to manipulate data, to manipulate graphs in order to, to convey a certain, a certain message. So it's not really about, you know, this, this is this is not a book by the way of saying that you should lie with statistics it's it's really um you know about how to how to notice when someone has either deliberately or or or, or inadvertently uh, presented statistics in a misleading way and how we can you know how we can do better how we can do better at that so um i'm talking about kids book here but you know they're really really in this same sort of you know, tradition of helping you understand how uh how numbers uh, are used not just in theoretical context, but in the media, in law, in medicine, in all these things in the world around us, right? So I was enjoying the book by this point, and then actually I was really surprised by what came next. I did not expect uh, chapter five at all, because it sort of took a bit of a detour and starts talking about the different number systems, right? And and it's a great um, addition to the book. You know, it uh, gets here talking about how, how number systems have evolved over the years, and uh, what the, uh, the the impact of that is uh, on you know how we how we do everything really so in particular you know why did we end up with decimal ba you know base ten number systems rather than uh, rather than uh, other bases and talks he talks about a lot about uh, actually some again some quite tragic uh, situations some mistakes that have come about where people have you know uh, put the decimal in the wrong place administered no point you know administered three grams of a drug instead of 0 0.003 grams of a drug or something like that. Because um, when you really think about it, you know, it makes a great point, you know, that, you know, actually, uh, you know, a base 12 system might be a lot better. You know, 10 divides, you know, if I do things in tenths, I can divide by two and by five quite easily. But if I had a base 12 system, that's divisible by two and three and four and six. And actually that makes a lot of divisions and, and apportionments um, a lot easier. And actually, you know, in the book, uh, the book really goes into a lot of a lot more details about the consequences uh, of that and some of the sort of errors that have come about because of rounding uh, and, and other and other things in that area. So that was a real that was a real surprise for me that that chapter was there and I really enjoyed it. Um, sixth chapter was all about optimization. Um, so um, really talking about algorithms and complexity, talking about uh, you know um, it's automated systems. You know, these days, uh, so many decisions are made by machines and computers uh, rather than humans. And he's talking here about the dangers in some ways of, of unsupervised uh, algorithms, right, and how they can go wrong. So he's, he's, there's a great example where he explains how uh, a book on Amazon ended up being uh, valued at $2 million as a result of competing algorithms doing fundamentally quite sensible things, but, uh, but, but ending up going out of control. Um, and also actually talks about something close to my own uh, research that I'm doing about how uh, algorithms in a in city trading environments um, have led to you know what they call flash crashes in financial markets where effectively an algorithm can go out of control and lead to a big uh, movement in a price that can cause uh, instability in, in a financial market. Um, and then the last chapter actually I think uh, I feel like it sort of saved the best for last in a way here as well, you know, and uh, it feels to me like, uh, you know, this is sort of his research, I think, um, that, you know, it, it's about uh, infectious diseases and how, um, you know, how, uh, how disease can spread, and in particular about how uh, immunization works and, you know, how if we immunize proportions of the population that can present, prevent the spread of diseases. And it goes into a lot of detail there about, uh, it's strategies for vaccinating. He talks about the um, HPV uh, vaccine in particular, really interesting discussion. So, um, so there's a lot in this book um, and there's a lot of, there is, you know, a bit of maths in there, but it's all written in a really informal style, very, very readable. You know, you don't have to sit and work and do uh, do algebra as you go through this book. It's all, you know, it, it's all written in a very conversational tone, very engaging tone, really funny in places. Um, and also covering some super serious um, bits of math. So, um, so I do really, you know, wholeheartedly recommend that you uh, that you uh, buy this book, uh, "The Maths of Life and Death" by Kit Yates. I think great as a gift for a family member who's just interested 
uh, in maths and its applications. Um, also great for uh, a personal statement. You know, if you're thinking of applying for actually, you know, not not for maths, but for well, 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 could be for maths, but I'm thinking for medicine or law. It could be a very interesting thing to put on your application, talking about uh, you know a different subject um, uh, and how that you know how maths relates to the subject you're applying to, you know, how, how, how are you justifying that you've done maths and further maths or just maths at A level and now you're going to apply for these subjects, you know, it's, there's a lot of things you can think about in here. But, you know, I'm not too, you know, I don't think we should do everything in our lives just to prepare for the next step and uh, prepare for, for university entrance as well. It's a really enjoyable book. I think, you know, I think you'll just uh, you'll just like reading that and, and you'll learn something from it uh, along the way as well. OK, so um, I think that's it. As I say, the link to the to buy the book if you want to uh, f through my Amazon store is, is below um, or you can get it in. It's in all the big bookstores at the moment as well and being promoted. If you do look at it on Amazon at the moment, I think it's on sale. I think it's a third off. Uh, so if you buy it right now, uh, there's a great deal there. Uh, anyway, let me know what you thought about this video. If you've read this book or you uh, or, or you read it afterwards, let me know in the comments uh, what you thought of it as well. And I'll pass those on to Kit. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.